The Cardiac Children's Hospital Early Warning Scoring System by Mary McClellan. Hello, my name is Mary McClellan and we will be talking about the Children's Hospital Early Warning Scoring System. Our objectives today are to discuss the outcomes of pediatric cardiopulmonary arrest, identify risk factors for cardiopulmonary arrest, identify components of rapid response systems to prevent cardiopulmonary arrests, and to discuss the use of an early warning scoring tool and algorithm to prevent cardiopulmonary arrests. Introduction 33 to 37% of children have 24-hour survival rates following an arrest. 25 to 33% of the children will survive to discharge. Of those who survive, a third have poor neurologic outcomes. Although the majority of arrests occur on the intensive care units, 14% may still occur on inpatient wards, and 13% can occur in the emergency departments. Hospitalized pediatric patients may have treatable symptoms present 1 to 16 hours prior to arrest events. Early recognition and treatment of these symptoms may prevent most arrests. And most concerning, the research has shown that almost two-thirds of arrests are considered preventable, and the survival is only 11 to 37 percent. To review some causes of inpatient pediatric arrests, the most common is respiratory failure, followed by circulatory shock, which could be from hypovolemia, sepsis, or poor cardiac function. Additionally, ventricular tachycardia or ventricular fibrillation can occur in some children. Using CHOOSE This is the Children's Hospital Early Warning Scoring Tool. We use this as a warning system to help prevent pediatric arrests in our institution. We will be looking at this tool in more detail throughout the discussion. We have an escalation of care algorithm based upon the score that we receive from the early warning scoring tool, which we've nicknamed CHOOSE. A patient that is scored zero to two, we consider a green zone and we continue routine assessments. If a child scores three to four, we call it the yellow zone. We increase the assessments. We notify our charge nurse and our physicians and the team discusses a plan on how to care for the child. We do consider having the ICU evaluate the patient to discuss if they need further interventions. If a child scores five or greater, this is a critical number, and we will have immediate evaluation of the patient at the bedside from the physician staff. Additionally, we will also notify the patient's attending. The team discusses a treatment plan and we also consider having the ICU immediately evaluate our patient. It is worth noting that if the patient suddenly deteriorated, regardless of their CHU score, we would still call a code blue. Here are some examples of sections of the CHUs. We have behavior neuro and cardiac displayed. Here you can see that the score goes from zero to three, with three being the highest level of acuity. The nurse will select the score that is of the highest acuity, even if more are present. If you look at the behavior neuro, here you can see that there's a difference between sleeping appropriately and sleeping, as an example. In the cardiac, you can see that you could have a patient who is pale, moderately tachycardic, with a new onset of ectopy or heart block. In this setting, the nurse would select three, as that is the most concerning symptom present in that domain. The remaining three sections are respiratory and oxygenation, family concern, and staff concern. Here you can see in the respiratory section, just like with a cardiac section, a patient could have multiple symptoms in each category of severity, but the nurse will still select the most concerning. Also in respiratory, we have a distinction whether someone has a baseline oxygen need or baseline desaturation compared to a new oxygen need or a new desaturation, as this would be more concerning. For family concerned or absent, the patient will only get one point. It is not a zero to three score. And if the staff are concerned, that also gives one point to the score. Case examples. So here we'll look at a case example. 
of a five-year-old with asthma who has arrived to the emergency department with a shortness of breath and tachycardia. From vital signs, the patient has a temperature of 36.7, a heart rate of 150, a respiratory rate of 38, a blood pressure of 96 over 40, and an oxygen saturation of 96%. The nurse scores the patient under the behavior neuro domain as a zero as the patient is alert and behaving appropriately. In the cardiovascular, the patient receives a score of two because they are moderately tachycardic. In the respiratory section, the patient has a mild desaturation less than five points below baseline and also has a moderate increased work of breathing and use of accessory muscles. Given that the latter is more concerning, the nurse will score the patient at a two. The family is happy that they're being seen and that treatment has begun and are not concerned, nor is the nurse. For each of those domains, they get a zero. The total score for the patient is a four. The nurse notifies the team. They evaluate the patient, start the patient on nebulized treatment, and also intravenous steroids, and the patient gets better. Because of early intervention, we were able to avoid further decompensation of this patient. Here we will look at another example of a four-year-old admitted with fever and an elevated white blood cell count. The patient has a fever of 38.7 centigrade, a heart rate of 140, a respiratory rate of 20, a blood pressure of 100 over 60. The patient is tired, well perfused, and breathing comfortably. The nurse scores the patient zero in the behavior domain as they are appropriate. In the cardiovascular section, the patient is moderately tachycardic and receives a two. In the respiratory section, the patient does not have any abnormalities and receives a zero. The family and the nurse are neither concerned as treatment has already begun. The patient scores a two. Blood cultures have been sent and antibiotics have been started and routine care of the patient can continue. Impact of CHOOSE there are different pediatric early warning scoring tools that are being used in different institutions that have been validated. We wanted to make sure that our CHOOSE tool was valid and effective in predicting deterioration or identifying patients that are at risk for arrest. The area under the receiving operator characteristic curve was 0.902 for our tool. We compared this to the Brighton pews and found that the area under the receiving operator curve for that tool was 0.789. So we felt that our tool performed better than the Brighton Pews and have been using this at our institution throughout all of our inpatient units. We wanted to examine how much time does our tool give our clinicians to intervene and help the patients. Compared to the Brighton Pews, we found that with a score of three, or greater, the pews would have given us a time of eight and a half hours, and our choose tool would have given us a little over 11 hours. Once you get to a score of five or greater, the pews tool gave us 35 minutes to intervene, compared to the choose tool, which gave us 3.8 hours. We did feel that this gave us more time to be able to intervene appropriately and save the child. The choose tool provides a standardized tool, language, and management for patients that are at risk. This is an objective measurement irrelevant of experience level of the clinician or familiarity that the clinician has with the patient. This has been helpful in the prevention of unplanned transfers to our ICUs through early treatment of deteriorating patients. Our transfer algorithm that we created has also been helpful in preventing patients bouncing back to the ICU after transfer to our inpatient wards. The scores that we collect on our patients, we display on our unit locator boards. We're able to display this electronically. When prior to our conversion to electronic records, we used paper and magnets that were colored and we would put them next to the patient's name so that at any moment, any clinician could walk onto a unit and see patients' two scores back for 24 hours. So this tool is available and in publication for use, for consideration at your institution. Um, we do recommend that the three-tiered algorithm um, was most effective when we validated the tool and could be used within your own hospital systems. This cost us nothing to implement other than some time for education 
and it has been incredibly effective in reducing the number of code and arrest events that we've had at our hospital. I thank you for watching this video, and I hope that it helps. Please help us improve the content by providing us with some feedback. 